first person to ask you this question. So you want us to go back? No, 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 no. Not, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, in, no. the, in the iteration that you guys considered, yeah. was that ever a consideration? Well, Bruno Heller you know, wrote the pilot before, uh, and then he actually wrote the, the part of Jim Gordon with me in mind, okay. because we had done a, um, uh, a pilot the year before that hadn't gone the series. So I was not privy to the conversation, so you know how, how it started. But I think the idea behind the whole thing was to start at the same place that almost all of the Batman lore starts. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, Bruce and his parents leave the movie theater at night, walk in a dark alley, and uh, a man or men approach them and ask for his mother's jewels, and she hands them over, and they smash them from her, and he puts bullets in Thomas and Martha Wayne, um, leaving a kid there, or um, We wanted to start that same place that the war starts at, but instead of flash, moving forward, flashing forward to when Bruce is an adult, Stay in the present. Stay at that time period. Jump over to the GCPD, and there you meet our hero of the story, um, Jim Gordon, a rookie detective who's assigned this new murder case. Shows up and is completely oblivious to. I mean, look, he's heard of Wayne Industries. He knows that they, you know, have billboards and they have. He knew he was a big deal. Well, yeah, in the same way that you might know that you know the Rockefellers are a big deal, right. but you don't necessarily know how deep it runs. And in the story of Gotham, the Waynes are more intimately tied to the power structures of Gotham than you could possibly imagine. Um, and we wanted to stay in the present as opposed to sort of flashing forward. And quite frankly, we wanted to grab the audience with that iconic scene. My last question, and then we'll open it up to the floor. Uh, there are characters that you're interacting with, and then all of a sudden you realize these are iconic characters. Right. Eddie becomes the Riddler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even your, your current girlfriend on the show, right. uh, Leslie Le Lee, yeah. becomes Leslie Tompkins. That's an iconic name in Batman lore. Yeah. Are you conscious of those things, or do they just become the characters in a, in a, in a television show? You mean, am I personally? Yeah. yeah, 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 certainly. And I think all the actors who have the, um, the privilege of portraying those characters are very aware of it, and, and certainly, you know, it's almost every actor that starts off is pretty nervous about not screwing it up. They want to make sure that they um, they do something that's that's both faithful to the um, to the characters that the people that people know and love, and also new. Um, and I think we've really walked that line pretty well. I mean, I think the example of Ed, you know, Corey Michael Smith has just been crushing it as Ed Nigma. And if you've been watching the season, his turn into he's not quite the Riddler yet, but he's starting to echo the, that sort of um, uh, psychopathy or whatever. Um, he's uh, he's a bad guy, and he's a but he's he's he, you hopefully what you understand from the story, and that's what's great about telling a origin story, is that he can be sympathetic at, at the same time. He's just a um, he's kind of a um, an odd duck, a bit of a bipolar guy. Right. He might have multiple personalities, and um, and he started off really loving this woman, Kristen Kringle, and um, unfortunately things went sideways, and he killed her. Right. And once you do that, it's hard to go back. Um, and, um, and so we're showing how all of these characters evolve into either heroes or villains, and, and some flip-flop back and forth. And that kid from Shameless isn't the Joker? <laughs> Are you kidding me? He was fantastic, yeah, yeah. Um, Cameron Monaghan was just terrific. Um, our hope is to tell uh, an evolving story of the Joker. The Joker and the death of Jerome uh, creates a cult following in Gotham, which you saw echoes up in this season with uh, when Bruce goes to track down his, his parents' killer. He meets this uh, woman played by Lori Petty, who is a punk rocker who kind of dresses in a similar style as the Joker, and there's this cult sort of punk rock thing that's going on. Um, what we want to, want to show is that this malevolent spirit has been released upon the city, and, um, and there's no way to put the genie back in the bottle once it's out. So um, it's only going to get worse from, from here on out. All right, I set the table for you guys. It's your, it's your show. My only request is that you come up and use the microphone yes. and uh, so everybody can hear you. Um, this, is, this is one way to start. Somebody get a picture of this yeah. one. The Grand Master of the Court of Owls. Sorry about that. Oh, good. Uh, glasses. To ask the question, you needed glasses? Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs>
first off, Ben, thanks so much for coming. Uh, I love the show. I was at the panel in New York. Um, you're awesome. Um, I don't know if you heard about this, but we just got J.K. Simmons to play Jim Gordon for the Justice League movie directed by Zack Snyder. So tell us a little about what your, what's your opinion on that, and what advice do you have for Jim Gordon to make, for actors who play Jim Gordon in other mediums? Well, I mean, J.K. is an incredible actor. I don't know him personally, but I'm, you know, I think that's fantastic casting. Um, uh, I don't have a ton of advice for, for people that are trying to portray the role. I think that um, each actor is going to make it his or her own. I was asked this question when I got the job, um, you know, whether I was going to try to uh, mimic any of the people that had done the, the role previously. And I said, no, um, quite frankly, um, any of the Gordons we've seen have been older, significantly older. Um, the Gordon that I'm playing is, starts off as a rookie cop. He's supposed to be probably in his 20s. Um, the commissioner we see is probably at least in his late 40s, 50s. Um, and so I wanted to, to be free of, of any restrictions. Um, and I would say the same with JK. Uh, you know, obviously Gary Oldman has done an amazing job in the Nolan movies. Now everybody, every actor gets to lend their little contribution to the, uh, to the body of work. And uh, I think that's the privilege of all of us. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> all right. Here's your man. <laughs> hey, Ben, how you doing? Hey, good, man. Hey. Big fan, by the way. Thanks, man. I miss you at Wizard World last year. I'm like, I got to go see Ben. I'm having a game last minute, so thank you, man. You're welcome. Big Batman fan. Awesome. Okay, uh, questions. Sure. Questions. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> Any way you think in the future um, that they would have a crossover with, like, any arrows or flash? Because I know Flash is possible, you know, right. kind of know it's Fox and all that. Cause I know Flash did with Supergirls. Anyway, think they could do anything like yeah. Flash go back to like Gotham years later? We get asked that question a lot, but, um, and I understand why. But the problem that we have is that we're set in the past. Oh. We're supposed to be, you know, an origin story that doesn't take place in, in present day, um, you know, Gotham City or Metropolis or where, whatever sort of um, physical uh, uh, location you want to have. Like, DC Universe. So for us to like cross over, we, you would have to have like a time travel or something like that. I mean, you could you could theoretically do it, but I think um, I think we're sort of a distinct world from those shows. Okay. All right, next question. Um, do, we, do we approve of his first one? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love those shows. They just my, my only I love the show. My only thing is Bruce is young as all hell right now. Yep. <laughs> How many seasons we gotta go through to for him to actually become bad? I remember some I've seen something on the video that said eventually it's gonna end with him becoming Batman. Yeah. How? Like thirty years from now? Or a long or? damn time. <laughs> 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 I gotta get paid. I gotta get paid. You gotta go to the boat. Yeah, you know, yeah. I gotta get glasses and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. This is not. This is not <laughs> this is just me being lazy on my age. No, a long time. Okay. Um, these questions. Um, your favorite character in Gotham. Besides yourself. Yeah, right. Uh, I can't say that. Uh, um, I am actually a huge fan of Nigma. I've always loved the sort of the, the mental um, gymnastics that he does and you know, messing with Gordon and yeah, yeah. that sort of um, I kinda wanted to smack him when he was fucking with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at that Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> last question. That might not be last okay. question. Right, 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 okay, everybody go ahead. Right. Who is your favorite uh, DC and Marvel character um, hero or villain? In both uh, oh God, that's a good question. I mean, I I actually grew up as a big fan of Iron Man. I know that's okay. kind of weird, but yeah, exactly. so, yeah. yeah. I grew up. I had like a, I had like a thick, um, you know, thick graphic novels of Iron Man, and uh, I feel like I loved Iron so Man. I guess you team Iron Man now. What? <laughs> uh, I just, I, just I, I loved it, man. I think it was really, really cool. Uh, any DC favorite characters or villains? Or? Um, I love all the ones on my show. Awesome. <laughs> good question. Thanks, bro. I think. <laughs> Hi. Um, with Gotham, you guys take a lot of time in character development, um, which I thought was fantastic. Instead of ish, you know, episode one having the Joker or some sort of uh, grab, you guys took your time and developed your characters. You guys, you partially got it when you said you wanted the season, you know, you wanted Gotham to go on for a long time, mm -hmm. but you guys renewed season by season. Right. So do you have in your mind how long, like, like if? if Renewals weren't an issue, or money was an issue. Right. Like, would you see it being five seasons or six seasons? Like, is there a 
it ends tangentially in your head? That's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, and I think you understand like uh, both both our aspirations and the reality. Um, the reality is we have to be renewed every season. The reality is everybody's got to watch every season. Um, you don't have to watch live. You can tape it or, or DVR it or Hulu it or whatever. But um, we are, you know, it's a cutthroat business. And unfortunately, as much as we would like to make the show forever, you know, people got to watch. Um, that being said, uh, we think we have so much story. The question is not we don't have enough story. We have so much story, we could do this thing forever, and we would love to. Um, it's a question of how quickly we tell the story. What we like to do, as you pointed out, and thank you for the compliment, is we like to build these characters slowly, carefully, show how they interact in very, various ways that are unexpected, um, or at least hopefully unexpected. Um, I think we have at least five or six seasons of um, you know, rough roadmap, but we can go much longer if we need to. I mean, the, for Jim Gordon to go from rookie detective to police commissioner should not take fewer than 10 years. We can jump ahead in the story chronologically. You know, we, can, we can all of a sudden be two years in the future if we wanted to. Right now, we don't feel the need to do that. Um, but Bruce starts off being about a 12, 13-year-old boy. Uh, he shouldn't become Batman until he's at least in his mid-twenties. So we definitely have five, six seasons, and, and hopefully more if, if people watch. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, man. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. And you? Good. I just have two questions. The first one's quick. Cool. My girlfriend's right over there. She wants to know how your baby girl's doing. Oh, thank you. My baby girl's doing great. Thank you, man. <laughs> That's very sweet. Happy to question. Yeah. In New 52, uh, Batman forgets that he's Batman, and uh -huh. Commissioner Gordon has to take over as Batman for at least, I think, nine issues. Right. I mean, it's probably not going to happen in the show, but is there, is there any way maybe that could be mirrored in the show? I, I wouldn't say yeah. no. Right. I mean, we could mirror that. We can't do it because... Again, this is a prequel to Batman. This is not a Batman uh, origin story. It's a Bruce Wayne origin story. It's not a Batman origin story. By the time we get to Batman, the show is, is run its course. Um, but we can definitely mirror it. And, and that's kind of what we're doing, or trying to do a lot of, is foreshadow the eventual need for Batman by showing Gotham City through the eyes of the precursor to Batman, which is Jim Gordon, this cop. You know, what, what he cannot do as a lawman is, is, is seek vengeance and, and um, retribution upon you know, the evildoers of Gotham. He can't actually just become a vigilante like uh, Bruce you know, will ultimately become. So we're showing all his limitations. So in that sense, Jim is the proto-Batman. He is the Batman before there's a Batman. We're showing why he fails effectively. So that's kind of the story. Um, but yeah, there'll be there'll there will be times when Jim obviously he's gone outside the law already, and he'll probably do that again. So, <laughs> thanks so much, Mr. Kenzie. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello. Hi. I'm a huge fan. Welcome to Atlantic City. Thank you. In the last few episodes, we see a lot of characters come back, like Galavan, Mr. Freeze, Firefly, and rumored Fish should be coming back really soon. What are your thoughts on this? Like have all these characters coming back all of a sudden. Well, we um, we want to you know make sure that the, the final episodes of the season are, are action packed. Like every like uh, I mentioned before, every season we have to be renewed. So every season we, we want to really kick the end into into a new season. Um, we also want to play with the the um, expectations of the audience and understand that there's always the possibility of any character to return. You know, Hugo Strange's laboratory is obviously an iconic part of of the Gotham world, and so what better place to have all of these bad guys reemerge from? Um, but that's not, you know, just because that situation may be coming to a head at the end of this season doesn't mean it doesn't preclude us from doing that again. Um, and no one's ever dead in Gotham, not forever. You know, that can always come back. I think that's what you know. I think that's what we all want. You know, we want to have some freedom to these characters who we love. We don't want to just see them die once. You know. Died multiple times. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Hasn't hasn't there been like a lot of talk shows and a lot of announcements about 
fish movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fish is coming back. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure. I wasn't trying to be. I think Although I thought like, you were like giving us a red herring, like like you were tricking us the other way, like ha, they fooled you. <laughs> I think she's in the promo for this. Yeah. So I, I don't think I'm breaking news here. Yeah. She is coming back. Fish is back. Hi. Thank you for coming. Um, I know we should have done. Anyway, I have a oh, question. Thank you. <laughs> Always like to hear it. It's all good. What's been your favorite episode of the film to be involved in? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, the pilot will always be, you know, fond in my memory because it's such a. You can't get to the series part unless you do the pilot part, right? And so there's a lot of pressure, and I definitely go bonded over that. Um, this season, I was really happy when we were able to do um, episodes that were a little different for us and different from, I think, a lot of superhero shows. We did an episode where Jim goes to prison and Oswald's discovering his father. Um, and so it was really an episode solely focused on, on two characters. You know, it was a much more contained episode. It was much more uh, character-based, um, slower in a way, but hopefully, you know, uh, rewarding emotionally for the fans that like, hardcore fans who watch. Um, and that was really fun for me. Um, it was a, a way of uh, twisting and turning Jim into a new version of himself by the time he emerged. Um, and we'd like to do more of that in future seasons, focusing on one or two characters at a time for an episode. I mean, a previous um, uh, uh, fan was mentioning um, uh, the slow burn on these characters. That's what we're going to do. We want to show them develop into really interesting and complex characters. So. That was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Is that, a, is that an Agent Carter costume? No. Well, it's Thor. Oh, of oh, course. Okay. Partially, I also feel like it should have been Captain America, though, because it just has that look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Um, my other question, if I can ask it, is sure. what got you into acting? Oh, I uh, started in college uh, taking some classes. I uh, was a little bored and, and wanted to uh, meet girls. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. We should note uh, to everybody here, and I'm sure you heard of as well, um, the comics industry lost an icon today. Darwin Cook passed away today. Uh, the amazing artist, uh, writer, all you have to think about is DC, The New Frontier. I would be remiss, I didn't start the, the panel by saying that, but I would be remiss if we don't give a round of applause for the work of Darwin Cook. Nice transitions. <laughs> um, quick question <coughs> regarding uh, you've seen The Dark Knight before, I assume. So, yes. are you guys planning on developing the relationship between Harvey Dent, Jim Gordon, and Batman eventually? The yes. Movie? Yes, we, we hope to. Um, that was the plan. Um, we. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, Harvey, Harvey can't become uh, Two Face until Batman exists. So it's all um, leading up to that. But, but the hope is to have Harvey um, appear at critical moments in the series to show the um, both the, the friendship between him and Gordon and, and, and the rivalry as well for the affections of Bruce. Okay. Well, one last thing uh, regarding you had one episode with Scarecrow, and there's been. You, you've seen the Joker, so everybody's waiting for Harley Quinn. Have you guys been talking about that, bringing Scarecrow into it, and possibly having little hints of Harley Quinn? There have been discussions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I could choose. Yeah. Hey, man. Right. What, up? what are your favorite uh, Jim Gordon iterations and stories? Uh, you mean of previous yeah, uh, Jim Gordons? Uh, I mean, actually, you know, Brian Cranston did the voice of Jim Gordon in, um, in uh, the Batman Year One that I did, and uh, he was, uh, as you would expect, Watching the old Adam Mush show, so you know, I, I, I've loved all the Gordons, um, and I don't mean to be political. I really do. I think they all fit. What's great about Batman is, you know, he's kind of our mythology, our American mythology. So, whatever generation you know we're in interprets their Batman and their and likewise their Gordon to fit that generation. Um, and we're in a uh, maybe a bit of a cynical age and a bit of a kind of rebellious age. And so, what better Gordon to have? Than when you did uh, year one, yeah. uh, did you read the book before you did the voice acting, or what was the process? Yeah, I'd actually already read the book, which was great. I mean, I, was, I loved that um, growing up, and uh, and so I, I familiarized myself again. You know, reread it, and um, unfortunately, you know, it's one of those funny things. You you go in a booth by yourself, so I wasn't really interacting with any of the other <laughs> Prince of my cast. I think I met Brian at Comic Con. <laughs> 
right? San Diego. Um, but uh, but it was a hoot, and, you know, and to do the Batman voice and to, I mean, what a treat, what a treat. That scene where he dives in on that, that dinner, the that yeah. dinner. I mean, are you kidding me? It was so much fun. So good. Yeah, it's so much fun, and you do feel pressure. I definitely felt pressure. I mean, you know, it's um, it's quite a legacy to uphold, but it's really fun. Yes. Hi. If you weren't Jim Gordon, who would you be on the show? Well, you're wearing a girl's rule shirt, so I think I would have to go with like Selena Kyle. Somebody. Like that. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty badass. You rock. Everyone gets to see your costume. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>